Hi friends, Tracy here from The Sewing Channel. Now, I've been wanting to put quilt flare on my jean coats for a while now, but I wanted it to be simple enough that it didn't take up the whole back of the coat. <laughs> and I wanted it to be easy enough that you could do it in like a couple hours. You know, because we have a lot of quilty events that we're gonna be attending this year, right? Maybe it's a quilt show, maybe it's a quilt retreat that you're going well, to. Well, you want to have some quilty flair on your coat. You sure do. Oh, I almost <laughs> forgot. This coat, I'll show you at the end, I did a little something different as far as color goes on this lighter jean jacket. So I'll see you at the end, right? Enough talking already. Let's get busy adding some quilty fun to our coats. First things first, choose your denim. <laughs> now I had a few to choose from out of my closet. I have a white denim, a stonewashed denim, a black denim, and a regular blue jean denim. <laughs> As a side note, my denim coat did have some stretch in it. I believe it was 3% spandex for reference. I have so many blue scraps that I definitely knew I wanted to use blue. Right here, what I'm doing is auditioning the scraps because I don't want to put an oddball piece of scrap fabric on here. I want it to all flow nicely within that blue colorway. Now starch is very important in this project. You have to starch your scraps and kind of get them really wet because we need to shrink these scraps. See, our coat has already been washed and dried several times in the washer and dryer, but our scraps have not been. I don't pre-wash any of my fabric when I bring it home from the store, so I know for sure all of my scraps have never been washed and dried. Knowing this, I then pre-shrink my scraps because I don't want it to look all mangled on the back of my coat when eventually I do have to wash this coat with these scraps adhered to the back of it. <laughs> now I have to tell you, my Laura Star performed perfectly in this project. Look at how nice and stiff that fabric is. Now it's time to take that big pile of scraps over to the sewing machine. Now anything truly does go when it comes to making scrappy quilt blocks. Now I know we're not making a quilt here, but it's the same thing, friends. Just do the same thing you would as if you were making a scrappy quilt. You're just making a scrappy block up and we're going to put it on the back of this jacket. One thing I did notice that was really interesting is usually when I make scrappy blocks up, I typically will press them and then trim them. You know, I would press after every time I would attach another piece of scrap. Well, this time I didn't have to do that. With combination of my starch and my Laura Star new iron, I actually just finger press them all at the sewing machine and they finger press just like as if I press them with the iron. And I'm not even kidding you. I mean, that is one big thing that I did notice with my new Laura Star and this particular project anyways. Building this center scrappy block truly does take minutes. I mean, seriously. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm trying to get it up to five and three quarter inches because that is the size that I want in the center. I didn't want a really big, huge block to take over my entire back on this coat. <laughs> so I opted for a more mid size and I didn't want it too small. You know, you'll have to figure that out on your coat, whether or not, you know, you need to make it bigger or smaller or whatnot. I know some coats vary in width sizes on the back, depending like on if it's a barn coat or something like that, then you would probably need to make your sawtooth start a lot bigger. If you're a regular viewer of the sewing channel, you know where all these scraps came from, right? Remember that quilt I made for my daughter uh, that she sent me a picture of off TikTok and I tried to like replicate it? <laughs> and then after her quilt, I ended up making this huge scrap quilt for my other daughter who just loved the blue colors and everything. And even after my second daughter's quilt, I ended up making that round blue rug. Remember that? Oh my word, that was so cute. I still use that to this day in my sewing room. <laughs> Needless to say, blue scraps do definitely abound in my sewing room. <laughs> With a project like this, you want to make sure that you avoid as much bulk as possible. So here I'm just trying to line up to see where my seams on the one piece meet up with the seams on the larger piece. You don't want the seams coming in at 
the same intersection. So all you have to do is just shift the piece one way or another just a little bit so that the seams are not right on top of each other. You will not be happy with those knobby, bulky seams at all. Now before I measure for that five and three quarter inch final, I'm going to definitely press that with my Laura Star iron, then go in and cut the five and three quarter inch block that I need for this project. So with this particular five and three quarter inch block, I go in and make a nice angle cut, 90 degree, and then I notice that, you know, I need a little bit more on one side, and that's okay. So I'm just gonna take a bigger piece here and check to see if that works next to the fabric here on the side, and it does. So then I attach that bigger piece on, and I just leave that bigger piece on until I actually cut that, you know, final, final. <laughs> As a side note, if I needed a larger area to cover on that ruler marking, I would probably add two other pieces together and then add them along the side. Since I only needed a little bit to make up that difference, it worked out perfectly because I don't want any one piece of scrap fabric taking over the overall look of this block. Now on to creating those adorable sawtooth star points. Create four three and three quarter inch scrappy blocks just like you did the center block. You'll also need four in the same size of white cotton fabric. On all of the star point blocks, slice corner to corner. And then on the white triangle pieces only, take with your rotary cutter and make a slit from side to side and a slit up toward the point, making like a three point cut. Take your marking tool and mark a quarter inch seam allowance on all three sides of these triangles. Marking the seam allowance to follow will help us pivot at the correct points at the sewing machine. Lay scrappy triangle facing up, then take your white triangle with the markings facing up <laughs> on top of that. Grab your needle and thread. Make sure you knot your thread and poke it up through that same point that you see me poking up through. And then you're going to sew back down into that intersection where those two points meet within the quarter inch seam allowance. After you've made three or four passes through that intersection with your needle and thread, then lay your piece flat and go back through one of those holes right there on the top and make sure that it pokes out in between the two pieces of fabric right there where you see my needle poking through. Pull that through and then you're going to lay that tail of the thread down nicely straight and trim it off, but make sure you trim enough so that it's not laying in the seam allowance on the other side. Take your glue stick and just pat a little bit of glue. We want that to stay in place. We don't want that to get lost in our seam allowance when we eventually sew all around. Line things back up nicely. Grab your needle and thread again and make a knot and come up through one of the other sides. Now you see I'm coming right up where that intersection meets. I'm gonna make three or four passes back and forth through there. It's important to note too that I'm not going through the same exact hole every time I'm going back and forth, you know, from the back to the front. It's such a tiny space, so you wanna watch for that. You just wanna go a thread over. Now on that white piece of fabric, you see I'm going through that intersection and I'm poking that needle right out through there. And I'm gonna do the same thing that I did on the last point. I'm gonna pull that all the way through so now the thread is inside. I'm going to snip it Add a dab of glue there so that it stays where it needs to stay and put everything back down nicely. And then I'm gonna work on that last point and I'm gonna do the same exact thing. I'm gonna go back and forth and back and forth. I know it seems tedious, friends, but if you do this, I guarantee you will be headache free when you go to turn these points right side out. It's important to note though that you don't want to prematurely cut those threads too short. You want them long enough to be able to wrap your finger around and pull. So I make them as long as they are before they hit the seam allowance on the opposite side. I hope that makes sense. Now take it over to your sewing machine and be sure to stitch right on the line that you drew on that white fabric 
earlier, you want to make sure to pivot right at those intersections, right where you had sewn in those thread tails. I do use a one and a half millimeter stitch length on this project. Now trim off all of the bulk out of those corner points and a little bit off angled on the sides of those points. That'll help give us, you know, the nicest point that we can possibly get with this. Then you're going to turn it right side out with your fingers first and then grab your pokey tool. Now the reason for the one and a half millimeter stitch length is so that we don't poke anything through on these stitch seam allowance because it's easy to do with these pokey tools, believe it or not. After you've gently pushed the pokey tool as far as it'll go with those little points, you're then going to grab those thread pulls and give them a little bit of a tug. Keep pulling gently on those little thread tails to make sure that all those points are coming out as far as they can possibly come out. I'd much rather go through the trouble of pulling these little thread tails out than pulling my hair out. Definitely use this hack, friends. <laughs> so here's what it looks like before pressing and here's what it looks like after pressing. It looks pretty good. It looks, you know, as good as it's going to. <laughs> And then you're going to go ahead and just trim those thread pullers right off of the triangles. I decided to stuff my project today with some polyfill only because though I have a ton of it and I need to use it up. You can totally use batting though if you have little extra batting pieces left laying around and just cut it to fit and just shove it in there and lay it nice and flat. Next, you're going to grab your needle and thread and on all the backs of the points here, you're going to grab those three flaps, push your needle through and just gather those flaps up and make sure that they are nice and tame and laying flat back there. Gathering this white in the back will help so that white does not show along the edging when we go to adhere this to our coat. You should have eight little puffy star points just like this one. <laughs> you will need a five and three quarter inch white piece of fabric to go along with your five and three quarter inch scrappy block. Take your rotary cutter and mark an X on that white piece of fabric square that's five and three quarter inches. It should look just like this. X marks the spot, right? <laughs> You're going to take that white piece of fabric and lay it directly on the right side of our scrappy uh, block that's five and three quarter inches. Pin the two pieces together. I find that pinning in this particular project helps so that nothing does shift any which way. Even though we did starch everything really good, you never know. So just pin it all together and sew a quarter inch seam allowance around the entire square. Pivoting directly on those corners, remember, just like we did on the triangles. Now you're going to just cut off all of the extra bulk along those corners. This will give a nice point on all of our corners in the end. Then you're going to take and turn it right side out and grab your pokey tool too. This will help to get all of those corners pushed out nicely and crisply. Now I don't use a whole lot of the polyfill. I mean, less is more I think with this particular project because we have to still sew over top of the polyfill and the cotton scrappy part. So, just, you know, stuff the corners first if you're using polyfill and then onto the center. And if you're using batting, just cut it to fit precisely within that square. Man, for a girl that hates hand sewing, I sure did a lot of hand sewing in this particular project. <laughs> but yeah, so grab your needle and thread and you're going to do the same thing like you did on the other pieces. You're going to sew up that back nicely, just tacking it together. Oh my word, it is going to be so cute. I love how scrappy and cute it looks. Oh my goodness. Now, since I thought that it was gonna be way too much to quilt all of these pieces on the jacket itself, I am quilting some of the stitches prior to even attaching it onto my coat. So you can see here, I'm going in about a quarter inch from the edge and going all the way around one time on each of the point pieces. And then when I get it to the coat, I will first stitch around the edge, getting it all stitched down, and then I will put another stitch mark on the inside part. So yeah, I just decided that it was gonna be too much to try and sew all this, you know, on my coat 
with all of the extra puffy stitching. So this worked out really well. So you can see here I'm doing the same exact stitching on the square piece in the very center, the base of the sawtooth star. I just pointed at my plate there on my sewing machine and that's what I was looking at as I was, you know, going further within this square, just making some square lines. And I will further stitch in between these lines when it gets to my jacket. Now you need to find the center back of your coat that you are going to be putting this sawtooth star on. And I just simply folded mine in half and lined up the seams and then just started marking down that center back. And I need new marking tools for sure because the last three videos, I know I've been saying this, but I just have not bought them. So I end up switching to my white roller chalk uh, marker here in a second. Yeah, right there. And I will link that down below. It really works well. The chalk is there every time and it never seems to run out. So I just, you know, made that line right down the center there. Now I'm measuring two inches down from that top uh, seam there. It's below the shoulders, but above the underarms. I don't know what that's called, but I use that on my mock-up on my other coat and it worked really well and the coats are identical. So I'm just putting pins in the center of my block there so I know what the center of that is. Then I just line it up with those center markings that I made on my coat. Just keep in mind though that that two inches below that stitch line there on my coat is different probably for everyone. So, you know, just put it in the center or wherever you want it on your coat specifically. <laughs> Once it's pinned on there all around, then take it to your sewing machine and now you're going to go in between the lines that you sewed when it was just all by itself. And I am starting toward the center first and then I will work my way out because I do want this one to be, you know, center. And I was afraid if I did the sides first or the edging, so to speak, along the square outer edge that it might get skewed a little. So that's why I just went ahead and you know, started in the center. I don't know if, you know, it would have been wonky or not. I don't know. But that's how my thought process was on that. And here you can see the inside, what I've done so far. Now I'm going to sew all along the edge. Once I know that it's on there straight, then I pretty much go for it and I just sew it down to my coat. And I did say at the beginning, my coat did have a little bit of spandex stretch to it. And I used my regular 9014 titanium needle and I used a one and a half millimeter stitch length in the entire project. So that's another thing to remember there. And you know, it just seemed to work out really, really well. I had thought about free motion quilting, which totally would have worked too. I really do think so. But for this, I wanted it to be manageable and easy for anyone at any level to be able to sew this down onto their coat. Hopefully you can see here, my stitch lines aren't even really that straight and square all the way around, but yet it still looks good because my block is definitely centered down on the center of the back of that coat. Now it's time to pin down all of the star points where you would like them in the final project. Just as a side tip, I place them and position them as if, you know, it wasn't a dark point right next to a dark point or it was two light points next to each other, you know, being the point and the center square block, if you know what I mean. What's important to know about sewing the points down onto your jean jacket is that you need to start with the outer edge first on this one. Since we already have our square and it's solid, it's center and it's down, we know that this star point, we have to make it work. So what I did was just butt the edge of the star point up against, you know, the edge of the square part where it needed to go, the center square. And I just pushed it closely there and then just sewed that one and a half millimeter stitch length along the entire triangle edge of the points. After all of the star points are stitched down on the edge, then it's time to go for those centers of the star points. Remember earlier, before we had put it on the coat, we took all the triangles and we sewed in at a quarter inch 
all the way around making sort of like an inner border. So now you're going to follow along that inner border will be your guide and you're going to come in a quarter inch from that. Here's a shot of the inside where I'm snipping away all of the stray threads. Now you'll notice though that I opted not to put like a piece of fabric on the inside or anything like that. I just left the stitch marks and I think it looks fine. Yay, you made it to the end. If you're wondering about this quilt right here, check the description box. I'll link it. It is my epic color wheel quilt and I have a full tutorial on it. So check it out. But first, check out the back of this coat. I mean, right? Is it cute or is it cute? It's cute. I know. I just love how it turned out. I think that the color is perfect. What do you think? Yeah? Even with the stretch within this coat, my needle and thread and everything, it took perfect. It, there was no adjustment needed to make whatsoever. So let me grab the other coat and try that on so you can see how I did that So one. this is the lighter stone wash look on this coat and I, I'm holding this because this has my microphone on it. So you're not gonna be able to hear me if I don't have this in front of me. So I'm gonna turn around and show you this one. So this one is a little different. This was my first one that I did and I really do like it because it is subtle. It has a very, you know, subtle wash. And that is perfect for a jean coat that is stone wash like this one. I just love the muted colors and just how it all comes together. It is still a sawtooth star and that's okay. I think that the sawtooth star is very traditional for quilting and you know, everybody knows, hey, that's a quilt star. <laughs> and if they don't, I'll tell them, right? We'll tell them. If you end up putting some quilty fun on your coat, be sure to send me some pictures in my email, thesewingchannel33 at gmail.com. Until next time on The Sewing Channel, take care.